Hello everyone, this is Alice HD with a great video for you here today. In this video, we will be checking out some of the most challenging and difficult nations found in Europa Universalis IV, ranging from terrible religions in awful provinces to subjects of subjects in severe isolation. I have selected my pick of the most mind-numbingly difficult nations to start off with at the 1444 starting date. Let's get started with number 10. Starting off the list at number 10 is the tiny Armenian rump state of Karabakh. A vassal of the much larger nation of Karakianu, Karabakh begins in a precarious position due to the lack of nations willing to support its independence. If you are lucky, Akkayanu might support your independence if they fall the Coptic religious rebels, but you will more than likely have to wait until either the Timurids, the Ottomans, or a Persian nation invades your liege before you can make your move. Karabakh is able to form the nation of Armenia, if you are somehow able to get the Mediterranean province of Adana, without the Mamluks or the Ottomans stomping your face in. On the positive side, the Coptic religion is very powerful, and you can obtain the achievement a blessed nation by obtaining all five Coptic blessings by conquering the five holy site provinces. Have you ever thought the Manchurian and Jurchen tribes were difficult starts? Welcome to the nightmare that is Sarek Yogur at number 9 on our list of the most difficult starting nations. Sporting a terrible 1-2-1 leader, and starting without feudalism, Sarag Yogur is completely trapped and can only expand into the mass of Ming, Chagatai, and Kham. Dwarfing all of these setbacks, however, is the fact that your government is a horde, and a lack of horde unity will invariably destroy your nation internally if you are unable to raise and conquer neighboring provinces. You can also be assured that the second that any of your neighbors become tributaries of Ming, your nation will be wiped off the face of the earth. If you are a truly gifted player and have more than a little luck, you can form Yuan if you manage to conquer the majority of China from this terrible starting position. Do you enjoy starting off without feudalism and surrounded by neighbors who hate you? Do you prefer your provinces to be destitute and poorer than sand? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you will absolutely love Yas at number 8 on our list of most difficult nations. With all of your immediate neighbors being larger than you and having heretical Islamic religions, even if you somehow break out and conquer land, you won't be able to convert any of it to your state religion. On top of this constraint, Yas is unable to secure any effective allies in the immediate area since apparently nobody finds value in an alliance with a deserted wasteland. Yas, that sure sounds fun. If you want a real challenge, Yas can form Arabia, but there are far more accessible and enjoyable nations to attempt that with. It's a no from me. Coming in without a Cass's belly is the island nation of Ryoku at number 7. With no neighbors to fabricate claims on, and no land within hundreds of kilometers of your tiny patch of land, a Ryoku player will undoubtedly be bored before discovering the magic of the best Cass's belly in the game. Simply load up your troops on some cogs, find a suitably weak and defenseless nation, and declare a war with no Cass's belly. In all honesty, though, Ryoku is not the most difficult nation to play with, as you start out under the tributary protection of Ming China. The true difficulty of Ryoku, and the reason it's on this list, lies in the existence of the Three Mountains achievement, where the player must conquer the world. Did I mention that Ryoku has the worst religion in the game? There is literally no reason to willingly play as an animist country, and I suggest you convert yourself if you intend on playing Ryoku. Next up on the list at number 6 is the deserted and destitute Maghreban emirate of Mazab. Boasting a 2-1-2 leader and belonging to the bizarre Abadi faith, your start will undoubtedly be challenging as none of your Sunni neighbors will like or ally you. On top of having the wrong religion in the neighborhood, Mazab's lands are atrociously poor and your expansion opportunities are limited in the beginning to Togurt and the other equally pitiful Saharan emirates. But even if you're somehow able to conquer the other two destitute Saharan minor nations, you won't be able to outmatch the coastal regional powers of Tunis and Tlemkin until you secure better alliances. At this point, you might be better off with converting to Sunni and attempting alliances with Morocco, the Mamluks, or even the Ottomans. If you do stay a body, however, you can attempt the achievement the third way, where you must conquer all heretical Islamic provinces and convert the entire Islamic world to the Abadi faith. But let's be honest, if you want to go for this achievement, you'd be better off playing Oman or Pots. If you thought being stuck in the Saharan Desert was easy, how would you feel about being sandwiched in Eastern Europe between two of the greatest powers in 1444? Limping into the number 5 spot of most difficult starting nations is the tiny Orthodox nation of Odoyev. Trapped between Muscovy, Lithuania, and Ryazan, 
Any player who decides on an Odoyev campaign will have to think quickly and creatively in order to survive the first few months of 1445. Your only possible alliance is Novgorod, who is severely outmatched by Muscovy, and will likewise be invaded piecemeal shortly after the start of the game. If you're able to snag a Novgorod alliance before they are declared on, you might be able to take out dozens of loans and beat back Muscovy, but this war will be incredibly hard, as you'll be severely outnumbered. On the other hand, if you are able to survive Odoyev's atrocious starting position, you will fortunately have the same dynasty as Muscovy for an easy personal union. Furthermore, with a successful Odoyev run, a player can accomplish four achievements that include Kinslayer, Mass Production, All Belongs to Mother Russia, and the Relentless Push East. Good luck, comrade. If you're tired of playing in Europe and the Middle East, but still want a spicy and excruciatingly difficult start, Sri Lanka is the region for you. Namaste, and welcome to the Vajaranagar vassal state of Jaffna, our number four pick of most challenging nations. Jaffna has the misfortune of being a one-province Hindu minor subject state of one of the largest and most powerful nations in the subcontinent at the 1444 starting date. If you thought that you could find reliable allies to support your independence, you'd be wrong. Only Balmanis will su potentially support your independence, but this actually doesn't change anything. Why? Because your navy is tiny, and even with Balmanis' support, you will not be able to blockade Vajaranagar, nor prevent them from crossing the strait and stomping your capital into the ground. Your best bet would be to wait and to hope that Vajrayanagar's fleet gets destroyed in war before even attempting to declare independence. Good luck, and may Shiva be with you. Next up on the list at number 3, we have Perm, by far one of the most frustrating nations to start as in EU4. If you like resetting your game and campaign hundreds of times in order to get anyone to support your independence, Perm is the nation for you. You start off north of the Ural Mountains, thousands of kilometers away from civilization, and any nations worth supporting you are too far away and receive a negative 1000 opinion modifier, preventing them from saving you from Muscovy. Only one nation, Novgorod, will sometimes support you, but will die to Muscovy in the first few years, or first few months as seen in this footage. Lithuania might also support you, but they almost always get personal unioned under Poland before you can wage your war for independence. On the bright side, however, if you survive, Perm has an excellent 645 ruler and 655 heir. You can also attempt the Great Perm achievement, where you must own the Russian, Siberian, Scandinavian, Canadian, Hudson Bay, and Cascadian regions. Nearing the top of our list at number 2 is the tiny one province minor of Manipur. If you like having the worst religion in the game, Animists, and if you also like having no allies, Manipur is the nation for you. With nobody willing to be your friend, and your neighbors all becoming tributary states in the first few days of the game, Manipur is a great pick for those of you who crave quite possibly the hardest start that isn't a subject state. Manipur starts as an animist nation that is tribal, will not receive feudalism until the 1650s without expansion, and is sandwiched between hostile and much more powerful neighbors and tributary states. If you're a true power player, you can try for the Animal Kingdom achievement, where you must unite the Bengal region and convert it to animism. Your best option, however, would be not to select this terrible nation in the first place. Coming in at the top of our list of most difficult nations to play in, Europe Universalis IV, is the two province minor of Sukhothai. The reason why this innocuous and relatively unknown nation is so mind-bogglingly difficult is because it is a vassal of Ayutthaya, which itself is a tributary of Ming China. If the player was to declare independence, therefore, they would be forced to defend their capital not only from the Thai armies of Ayutthaya, but also from Ming China, who have the largest army at the start of the game. If your idea of fun is winning a war where you are outnumbered more than 100 to 1 and fighting against the most powerful nation in the game as a two-province minor, Sukhothai is the nation for you. Fortunately though, Sukhothai is reliably able to get Khmer and Dai Viet to support their independence. If you want to succeed in your independence, it is imperative that you wait until Ming inevitably declares war on Arat or any of the other northern hordes bordering China. At this point, you will have at least several months, and at most, a few years, to get as much war score as possible with your allies before China comes southwards and flattens you into the ground. Sukhothai's flag is quite interesting, and their map color is one of the coolest shades of toothpaste light bluish purple in the game, if you are able to survive. Good luck if you roll with Sukhothai, you are going to need it. 
Before ending the video, I would like to point out some honorable mentions of nations that I consider to be hard, but weren't able to make the cut. Navarra, Theodoro, Athens, aka the vassal of Byzantium, Ligor, Novgorod, and East Siberian tribes are all difficult, but don't appear in the video, as they can reliably expand, become independent, or secure advantages far easier than the 10 picks listed in the video. That concludes my top picks for most difficult starting nations in Europa Universalis 4. What difficult and impossible nations do you enjoy playing? Do you enjoy playing harder nations? Do you agree with my list? Let me know in the comment box below. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.